must be choking. You must be choking. I'm very sorry. But you're a doctor. It's your job to heal people. How could you just let her die? Please, calm down. As her doctor, I promise I'll do what I can, but there's still no effective treatment for her condition. How long does she have? I'm afraid I'm not sure. Three years at most, perhaps six months. It's impossible to say with certainty. Without further ado, the final part of Silent Hill 2. Let's go. Oh man, remember in my notes how I told you I was I called this the uh, mascot battle times oh, two? Oh right, right. Because that's what we got. Do Sorry we, if I spoiled it for you guys. Don't we just like run around too? You can't actually beat either of them? Oh, uh, you can shoot them, supposedly. And I think that's the idea. It's time to end this, man. Okay, so this is the mascot fight. The idea is you just gotta circle and strafe, and eventually it all resolves itself. Also, I gotta make sure that I'm, I'm well equipped with the bullets, because I can do that. Uh, the problem is, trying to get more than one hit, kinda, kinda depressing, because you can't really do it if you're clever enough. I'm not. You can, you can kind of do it, but for the most part, action. And if you do what I'm doing, you'll never get hurt. Or at least that's the idea. I find it interesting that they don't have the brains to, like, try to, to, like, corner you. They just follow in a single file line. I um, mean, I, I think that's just the, I, the AI. I mean, uh, no, honestly, but, yeah. But still, I think that's an interesting suggestion of Pyramid Head. That Pyramid Head doesn't... Maybe he can't actually see. Maybe he, he follows you based on your footsteps. Oh, I mean, or like hearing. Yeah. I mean that that that's a that's an idea, but I I don't know. Like it, it's one of those things where it's like I don't think we're ever gonna get an answer. It's just something that that happens. And I, I just, mean, like I these just, these guys, they're symbolic of James himself. James is immortal. You know what? I'd buy it. I'd I'd buy that theory. I'm I'm not saying I hate James, but depending on the ending. Uh, I, I might really hate James. There, there's a possibility. I think no matter what, I, I'm not fond of James. I mean, I, I gotta be honest, I don't really want to spoil too much just because, um, you know, we're so close to the ending, and, uh, it, depending on what we do, or what we have done, I guess I, I should say. Even from what we've seen so far, James isn't exactly a likable character. Not really. Um... And I actually think, though, that him not being a likable character is what makes this game so intriguing. Well, what I really like is the fact that, you know, he's so flawed. It, it's it's kind of really human-esque in a lot of ways. But here's the thing, he's flawed, but there are plenty of flawed characters that are likable. Oh, absolutely. But he is not one. He's flawed, no. he's flawed but you still dislike him. Well, sort of. Uh, again, I think a lot of it has to do well, with the conclusion. For me. for me, I uh, like him. I, I, I guess for me it's more situational. Right now it's kind of like, oh, James, what have you done with yourself? How did I miss that? See, here's the problem. Like, they, they do follow you, but, like, also, you're, you're kind of limited to a whole bunch of things. For instance, um, I only have a set amount. Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. 
I was gonna say you only have a set amount of time to actually attack, but at the same time, I don't really know if I, I accomplish much. It doesn't really matter. Now, what I find interesting is that, you know, they make a mistake and then they have to flip over the spear. Yeah. Also, weren't they faced the other way? Also, I got I got a trophy. I got a trophy, everybody. Also, I got two eggs. Now, what I, what, I don't know if this is symbolic, but you can actually look at it, and it's like you got a rust-colored egg, and it's about yeah. the size of a quill's egg, which I think is slightly smaller than a chicken's egg. I could be wrong. But what's the other one? Is the other one the same size? Oh, well, yeah, it's same also size. quill. It's just a scarlet egg. They're just different colors. Yeah, but one suggests vibrant life, and the other one suggests death. Really? Like death? Yeah, because rust colored means that it's no longer useful. It's uh, past its prime, unlike the scarlet egg, which is blood and that symbols life. Okay, so the color is very symbolic, and I I, I would agree in a lot of ways, because you see, this could just be like the beginning of James's life, or it could be the end of James's life. You decide. Yep. Now, something else I was thinking about as I was playing through this, because I played through it yesterday, because I, I was just like, I'm oh, there is a face. That That is not me. Like, that is a face. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It almost looks like a baby. I would say more of an old man. Okay, so this is the cinematic part. <laughs> I, I gotta be quiet. It's an interpretation. Mary? What do you want, James? I, I brought you some flowers. Flowers? I don't want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Mary, what are you saying? Look, I'm disgusting. I don't deserve flowers. Between the disease and the drugs, I look like a monster. What are you looking at? Get the hell out of here. Just leave me alone already. I'm no use to anyone. I'll be dead soon anyway. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. It'd be easier if they'd just kill me. But I guess the hospital's making a nice profit off me. They want to keep me alive. Are you still here? I told you to go. Are you deaf? Don't come back! James. Wait. Please don't go. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I didn't mean what I said. Please, James. Just tell me I'll be okay. Tell me I'm not gonna die. Help me. That was it. This is actually really interesting because it plays a lot on her, her whole spiel about don't look at me between the disease and the drugs. I look like a monster. Mm -hmm. I don't look human. X, Y, and Z. Um, it actually plays along with a lot of what's the story that we've seen so far. Maria, despite being different and arguably a monster herself. Oh, she... I, I don't know about that. Uh, I was just gonna comment on the fact that it's raining, and uh, that that's gotta be that's that's very symbolic. It, one, it's depressing. Two, it's very reflective of Mary in her uh, when she was in the hospital. It's Mary's tears. Yeah. Well, I mean. Remember how in her diary, when we read it in the hospital, she said that it rained, like, all the time? Yeah. I, I was just saying, like, th this is symbolic on so many levels. All right. Now, based on what happens now... Oh, thank God. All right. I, I just want to make this this distinction. If, uh, if she was on the bed, mm -hmm. that would literally be Mary. This is not Mary. Oh, this is not Mary. This is okay. not Mary. Mary. When will you ever stop making that mistake? Mary's dead. You killed her. Maria. It's you. But I don't need you anymore. What? You must be joking. But I can be yours. I'll be here for you forever. And I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted. I'm different than Mary. How can you throw me away? I understand now. 
It's time to end this nightmare. No, I won't let you. You deserve to die too, James. This is a perfect representation, though, of how Maria is a monster. Yeah, but the interesting thing is, no matter how, like what happens, you can't fight Mary, and she she it's the same boss essentially. But don't you think it's strange that Maria could not die? Oh, um, well, absolutely. But what's even stranger is how she was born. I don't, I we are, we'll see how she's born. Well, I mean that's already uh, yeah yeah I haven't posted that yet. All right. So as I was saying. Uh, I, I probably didn't post this, but, you know, she she's saying, I can be perfect, James. I can be what you always wanted. I can be more married than you ever wanted. But, see, this, uh, it, to me, this it is shows um, she's at least in part a reflection of Mary in that... She's always been a reflection of no, Mary. No, but it's more so because, see, the bed in which she was, Mary was lying in. When she said, I look disgusting, I look like a monster. Oh, yeah. And here you have Maria, her reflection, who is actually a monster. Oh, she's always been a monster. She also looks like one of those hanging cages, like the, the fleshy lip one yeah. from the, the hospital. Uh, what what that symbolizes, God help me, it's, prob it's probably the sexual desires of change, yeah, you know? Yeah, sexual desires um, of In fact... You know that tell that she has that that violates you if she if you give her the chance. Although what I find really interesting is the moths or the butterflies, um, because we had room in the in the uh, apartment that was like basically just that. And I need to reload. Oh man. So uh, there's really not a whole lot to talk about other than like th this is the final boss. I guess there is a lot to talk about. I just can't think of anything uh, other than th this is this is really really weird. I think it's worth noting that this is clearly a hospital, a hospital room esque room that's dilapidated and is deteriorated, kind of like how Mary was deteriorating and how she viewed herself in that monster. And also. Uh, well, so I unequipped that. That wasn't what I was trying to say. I was just gonna say, uh, also the water, like the rain and the water, which, yeah, which as I as I've said, that's that's really symbolic of a lot of how Mary was dealing with being in the hospital. Yeah, and I, considering that she was crying right before this, I would say it symbolizes her tears. Yeah, that's raining down on James. And it kind of reminds me of the song "Love Rain Over Me." The um, moths, though, the moths are difficult. Okay, so I feel like there should be some symbols. I feel them, like they're but... symbolic of death, but I'm not sure if that's accurate, even in the slightest. No, I think that actually could be accurate, given that, and this is this is a stretch, so bear with me. But I think um, in Japan. Oh, uh, hey, there's that skull moth, and I remember that from uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh. I think it, and I think in Japan, uh, butterflies have to do with death in some way. Because do you remember Bleach? Uh, vaguely. I didn't and watch a whole lot of Bleach. When they when they purified souls, they turned into butterflies. Well, you you know butterflies. Butterflies are fantastic. Uh, they're they're pretty, except you know when you view them as a pest, like farmers, because the caterpillars are ravenous. But um, that has nothing to do with any of this. But, and also, since we were talking about Persona 3 earlier, off of this recording, but we were talking about Persona 3. Actually, speaking of Persona, I, I have a whole different viewpoint, but, you know, that, that's regardless. Please, go on. Um, Persona 3 begins with, uh, begins and end, ends with the image of a butterfly. Which I think is also related to that one question that's also pretty famous, which is, uh, you know, the dream of, like, are you are you a person? Or are you the butterfly? And you dream of like the vice versa. Uh, well, actually, what I thought it meant because it seems like going off the the hypothesis that in Japan, because I I haven't looked this up, I can't confirm this. Uh, butterflies are related to death. There is a big theory going on that given the beginning and ending image of a butterfly, that the protagonist dying is just reliving that last year over and over again. I did it. All right, I was thinking about something, and this this is crucial, because she's not actually dead. 
she's almost dead. We defeated her. But, you know, she she's like... She's just creepy saying our name over and over again. Like a broken record. And I was thinking, what would be the most fitting way to end this? With a knife. Not just any knife. Ow. Also, the angle was perfect. It was. <laughs> That that might be a little immature, but hey, I, I think it's more fitting than it could have ever been. Mary. <coughs> Jay. I told you that I wanted to die, James. And I wanted the pain to end. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. No. That's not true. You also said you didn't want to die. Truth is, I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. James, if that were true, then why do you look so sad? Mary? James? Please, please do something for me. Go on with your life. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. Well, I'm alone there now. In our special place. Waiting for you. Waiting for you to come to see me. But you never do. And so I wait, wrapped in my cocoon of pain and loneliness. I know I've done a terrible thing to you. Something you'll never forgive me for. I wish I could change that. But I can't. I feel so pathetic and ugly lying here, waiting for you. Every day I stare up at the cracks in the ceiling, and all I can think about is how unfair it all is. The doctor came today. He told me I could go home for a short stay. It's not that I'm getting better. It's just that this may be my last chance. I think you know what I mean. Even so, I'm glad to be coming home. I've missed you terribly. But I'm afraid, James. I'm afraid you don't really want me to come home. Whenever you come see me, I can tell how hard it is on you. 
I don't know if you hate me, or pity me, or maybe I just disgust you. I'm sorry about that. When I first learned that I was gonna die, I just didn't want to accept it. I was so angry all the time. I struck out at everyone I loved most. Especially you, James. That's why I understand if you do hate me. But I want you to know this, James. I'll always love you. Even though our life together had to end like this. I still wouldn't trade it for the world. We had some wonderful years together. Uh, uh, this letter has gone on too long, so... I'll say goodbye. I told the nurse to give this to you after I'm gone. That means that, as you read this, I'm already dead. I can't tell you to remember me. But I can't bear for you to forget me. These last few years since I became ill, I'm so sorry for what I did to you. You did to us. You've given me so much. And I haven't been able to return a single thing. That's why I want you to live for yourself now. Do what's best for you, James. Oh, James. made me happy. They both visit her grave together? No, I think they're just leaving. Oh, okay. This is just them on their way. Now, you know, I actually have a question. Hmm. How the hell did Laura get here? She was in the, uh... She was in the hotel. Yeah, but how the hell did she get here? I think James found her. No, but how the hell did she get to Silent Hill? <laughs> she traveled there. How? They don't explain. But how? It's not addressed. It's not addressed. Okay, so that was it. That was Silent Hill 2. Um, we got my favorite ending out of the three that you can get from your first playthrough. The leaving ending. I like it because, you know, I feel like it's kind of James accepting everything and kind of actually being able to let Mary go. And also, you see him leaving with Laura, so that can only mean that, you know, he's going to adopt her. Yeah. Um, something I found interesting in that is in the letter when she's like, uh, the doctor says... I can take a short trip home yeah. or whatever. Um, but not because she's getting better, because it's, it's almost too late. I So I took a death studies class where we were talking a lot about terminal illnesses and mm -hmm. stuff. And I think that's actually a pretty good representation of when you try too hard to save the person's life and not worry about the quality of life that they have. Because if you think about it, her life was pretty miserable. Yeah, well I mean... There is one thing to that, but we're never going to get an answer, and that's like, you know, before she was ill, you'd think it was pretty happy, because, you know, she's saying, like, how much she, she really liked that, you know, yeah, she was... Yeah, but I'm saying that hospice care for her probably would have been better, and probably would have prevented the whole story from happening, mm -hmm. because she would have been able to go home, and it would have been about keeping her comfortable. 
friend yeah. and her being miserable and her being able to stay with James and then having a proper goodbye. And but you, you, you also know how hard it was on James. Like, even Mary knew about it to the point where she actually was really frustrated and would lash out on James. Unintentionally, but at the same yeah. time, you know, there wasn't really anything she could do about it. She pushed away the people that she loved, especially yeah. James. I wish we could have seen because I don't remember the still water ending. Uh, basically, it's it's just James not being able to move on. So uh, he takes Mary's body and he just drives into the lake. Yeah, does he jump into the lake with it, or does? I think he just drives it into the lake. Uh, it's been a while. I remember on my first playthrough, like a long, long time ago. That's the ending that I got. Yeah, I remember watching that ending. I just don't remember the the finer details. I remember him being in the middle of the lake with Mary's body. I don't remember what he did with it. Uh, I mean, like, I, I don't remember I that. remember him saying something about reviving her. Oh, that that's the, uh, re I think that's the revival ending. That's, uh, like, that's, that's not the, that's not one of the three that's that we can... That's the Stillwater ending. Okay. That's not the Stillwater ending. Um, the Stillwater ending is basically he commits suicide. Oh, okay. Yeah. That would definitely be a more fitting ending. I mean, actually, the thing is, I think, uh, a lot of the fans, uh, seem to think that's the more canonical ending that's, even though it ha there is no canonical ending like there, it, there it's left no. open-ended and that and the reason is because a lot of the endings are pretty diverse except for you know the dog and the ufo ending because those are just comedical regardless yeah i think the only silent hill game that has a canonical ending is the first one uh like, i mean no. yes but it's like a combination of like two different endings what it, uh, so basically, it's not like one specific canonical ending. It's like a combination where obviously uh, Harry gets uh, Cheryl slash Heather, but at the same yeah. time, I don't think Sybil is no, a part of that. No, I don't think Sybil makes yeah. it out, no. I think the canonical ending is Heather, he, he gets the baby, he gets baby Heather and runs, but Sybil is not part of that. Yeah, and I'm not sure, but I don't... I think, like, the only way to actually get Sybil is, like, you, you get, like, the, the really good ending. Yeah, that's the, that's the best ending. Yeah, but the other thing, too, that is Sybil is a part of that. Yeah. And, and so it's, like, a combination of, like, different endings. Uh, that's what I mean. It's it's not exactly, like, there, but... Uh, yeah, so th this is the results. You save 22 times... It took us six hours, but, you know, probably cut off a lot of that. The boat stage time took me a minute and 42 How seconds. How the hell did this only take six hours? Because, you know, we, we broke it up. A lot. I still, even told the time, it seems like it would be longer than six hours. Yeah. So, anyways, um, th this has been Silent Hill. Uh, like, there's like not really that. much to say other than we got, we got the, we got the, um, Form from a wish scenario, but at the same time, I'm, I feel like this is this is us wrapping it up. I like that it gives the boat stage time and max speed of the boat. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't seem like that's really relevant, but it's like yeah, we're we're gonna give you that. Anyways, Anyways. so the running distance. Anyways, uh, sorry, I'm I'm being redundant now. Uh, what are your closing thoughts on Silent Hill Two? Because yeah. It's one. Of the, it's probably one of the best made Silent Hill games ever. I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I I was glad to see that they use because because this one is like one of the most popular among fans. They used it as a kind of a base in Downpour, and Downpour was significantly better than um, a lot of the games before it. Mm, I, it. I I think that's a very debatable subject, but I mean. For... As far as atmosphere goes, though, I think it did a better job. Uh, I, I was gonna say, I, I liked it in a lot of ways, but honestly, I think, um, the revival ending, I'm not sure if that's what it's called, it's probably not, but, like, that, that's probably my favorite ending out of all of them, because it's, like, the fairy tale ending that, you know, you, you kind of want, if, like, I, I don't know, I kind of want James and Mary to, like, live happily ever after, but of course, that's, I don't think that's really what happens, and I, I mean, it's very unfitting for Silent Hill, if you ask me. But that said, I, this ending I feel is kind of really nice because you know it's it's acceptance. Yeah, this one's probably my favorite ending, followed by the one where he finishes with um, Maria and he's kind of. Oh, that that is my least favorite ending. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, the revival ending is probably my least favorite because really? I like I prefer Still Water. Oh, okay. That one as well. Yeah, in in water. In or water, something, or something yeah. whatever. Uh, anyways. 
So, I, I think that's it. I'm, I'm gonna end it. This has gone on for like half an hour, but you know, th this was it. This was Silent Hill 2. Gonna do Born From a Wish, but uh, that that's regardless. This, this is us finishing it up. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.